Hi there, this is Justin. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use Tableau to explore new datasets. As a consultant, I often get exposed to new databases and other types of data, which is brand new to me. And I need to explore that data so I can understand what I have to work with. So for this example, I'm going to be using the Tableau um, Superstore dataset. This is a dataset that comes by default with Tableau and we can explore this data set together. I'm going to imagine that I've never seen this data set before and you know assume that I'm going to need to run analyses and build dashboards on this data. Okay, so the first thing I like to do when I come across a new data set is actually understand the First and foremost, the columns and the data types that are present in the data. So I found the best way to do that is to click on this little icon over here next to the relevant table. So in this example, we're going to be looking at the orders table. Um, so if I click this little icon over here, I get a, an output of the data. Um, depending on the volume of your, you know, the number of rows you have, you might get all of it or just a portion of it. I think it's a limit of 10,000 by default. And I'm gonna go ahead and change that to one and push enter and so I can get one row of data. And this, by the way, this icon will appear next to each table and it doesn't matter which data set and source you're using, you should see a list of um, tables here. In this case, you know, we're talking about a CSV um, Excel file, rather. Um, so this is going to be sheets, but each sheet is meant to represent a table. So um, at this point, I'm going to do Control A and Control C on my keyboard. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this into a Google Sheet. And I'm purposely pasting it over here, and you'll see in a second why, because I want to actually paste it, um, you know, from top, uh, what would that be, horizontally. So over here in the second row, I'm going to right click, paste special, paste transpose, and I'm going to do the same thing with the values. Control, Control C, paste special, paste transpose. I'm going to come over here and delete this. And I'm going to add over here my headers, columns, data. And you know, it's not that important what you call these, just so you can differentiate them from the rest. Um, you know, make it bold and underlined. Right. And then I'm going to lastly come over here. And we're going to line left and we're going to make it size eight. Just make sure it's spread out. And the reason I do this is I want to see from kind of an eagle's eye view the columns that are present in this table and then, you know, an example of what that data looks like. Um, so over here we have category, we can see it's a string value, customer ID, you can see it's, a, you know, uh, very much an ID, you know, mixture of, of numbers and letters, so that's also a string. Uh, order date, we have a pure date field here, sort of timestamp, um, you know, some integer values down here, and discount is most likely going to be a float, uh, but right now we're not sure because we just see a zero. So this is a good way to get started, um, and this alone might be enough, depending on the complexity of the, the table, you can really start to understand what we're dealing with. So, you know, we can start to see that we've got uh, three different IDs in this table. So we've got, we need to work out what the primary key is and what the foreign keys are, um, row ID down here. So yeah, I'm starting to paint a picture for ourselves, customer name, customer ID. So that's going to be useful. Cool. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to Tableau, we close this, we're going to jump into a sheet. And this first sheet we're going to be using for QA purposes. So I'm just going to give it a name of QA. I'm going to color code it brown. I like to make my, my QA or testing sheets brown because, you know, brown, kind of an off-putting color. 
And it, it just tells me visually that I'm not going to be using this sheet when I build any of my dashboards. And now what I want to do is basically dive into the data and first look once again, top down approach. We're going to start by looking at the number of records just to give us a picture of the volume of data we, we're working with. Um, and this is kind of important because if we're dealing with, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of rows, um, we might want to go back to the drawing board and reshape our data um, because, you know, it's going to be just too much uh, and doesn't make sense to work with so many rows. Uh, the next thing I like to do is focus on my IDs because IDs are going to become critical for almost anything I do, um, you know, when I'm running certain analyses or building certain visualizations. So um, as we saw before, we're dealing with order ID um, and yeah, order ID. I wonder why we saw other IDs when we copy pasted it. Well, it's less critical. So let's just focus on order ID and you'll see what I'm going to do here. So we're going to start by doing account distinct on order ID. And I'm going to go ahead and add here account of order ID. And I'd like to do this for each of my IDs because I want to understand if I have any duplicates, uh, duplicate rows in my data. So I'm just going to reorder it. So I have sum of number of rows, always at the top. This number of rows field is something that Tableau provides automatically. It's essentially, you know, number of, of rows. Um, they call it number of records. And you can see over here, you know, this number matches um, what we saw previously. So we've got almost 10,000 re records. Um, count of order IDs, the same. And that basically tells us that for every single row, we have an order ID, which is great because that kind of starts to tell us that order ID is, is going to be uh, an important ID in this table because it appears in every single case. Um, but notice we have a distinct count of order ID is different from our count of order ID. So this is just, you know, a regular count. We're counting every single time we see this field across all of our records. There's no filter set and we get almost 10,000, which is the same number of records. But when we're doing a distinct count, meaning we're only counting each distinct value once, we get 5,009. So we can clearly see here that we have duplicates. Um, and if we jump back into our data set uh, and we have a look here, if we focus on the first two rows, you can actually see there's a duplication here. Uh, so that's important to note. Um, we don't have a unique value across order ID per row. Um, the granularity of the data is not on the order ID level because in that case, you know, we would have one row per order ID. Instead, we have duplicates. So what we need to do now is to actually just scroll our eye across the columns and try to see what's different here. You know, we want to determine is this a pure duplication of the row meaning that it's, you know, every, all the data is duplicated, you know, across the entire row, or is an actual logical reason why we have duplicates, because duplicates are going to create problems for us uh, later down the road. So if we start to scan, we see order ID is, is a duplicate, order date, you know, ship mode, customer name. And if we scroll across, we can see we have duplicates all the way to subcategory. And then we also see product name, sales, quantity, these are different. So now we, you know, the light bulb should go on and tell us that in actual fact, what seems to be the case here is that the granularity of our data is on the product name level, right? Because subcategory is telling us something about the product. Um, so we can kind of prove that if we jump back in into Tableau, into our sheets, and I'm going to open up a new sheet. And this time I'm going to take order date and, and add it here to our rows. Now, if you have a huge amount of data, then, you know, bringing the, the important ID into the sheet, you know, you might have hundreds of thousands of rows here and that's not going to be that useful. So in that case, just add a filter 
um, and try to limit the number um, of rows appearing in the sheet. It's not that critical. There's no magic number or anything. You just don't want to have too many because then it's going to be very slow. And now what I can do is I can come over here to uh, product and um, I'm going to drag product name next to order ID. And you can see that in fact it does split out the rows, um, split out, you know, it shows us that we have duplicates on the order ID level. We can see that in some cases, you know, you've got two rows, four rows, and so on. And, you know, lastly, I can do this. I can do, or rather, let me focus first on keeping only this order. And now if I go ahead and do count order ID and count distinct of order ID and remove product name and I drag these in, I expect to see count distinct of one and count of four. And that's exactly what we see. We see a distinct count of one and a count of four. And that is because there's four different products that appear under this order. So the last thing, um, the last kind of comment I want to make on exploring new data sets is it's kind of helpful to look at the columns um, that exist in your data and see if the data that's, that, it, that is provided for the column um, actually makes sense in relation to the name. So, you know, a common example is there'll be a field where you have the word date, but it will actually be a timestamp. And, you know, as an analyst, you look at the word date and you expect to see a date field. And if it's a timestamp field, then it's going to just end up creating, you know, confusion and, you know, you're going to end up wasting your time by doing certain things with the data because the name is telling you one thing when the data is actually, you know, something else. Um, so I like to go through the data and just make sure that the naming conventions in relation to the actual data in the column makes sense. Um, you know, imagine, you know, you hear, hear, here you have postal code. Imagine this was, you know, um, the name of the area instead. So, you know, now you look at postal code, you expect to see a numerical value and instead you've got a string value uh, or like an integer value and, and instead you have a string value and that's going to just create a lot of confusion. So what what you can do in that case is you can go back to your you know schema spreadsheet uh, and by the way I will do this um, process uh, going um, you know vertic uh, um, horizontally uh, for each of the tables in my data set and that way if i'm building something and i don't exactly remember the fields and their names etc i can come you know back to my spreadsheet and that just saves a lot of time so what you know what you can do in that case is you can actually make a notes field here um, or even rename the column have another field uh, another field for you know the the a new name naming conventions for certain fields and then when you're creating your data sets using SQL, um, as you know, you can set aliases for the different fields. And that way, um, you know, you're taking uh, a mistake that R&D have made by, or a product manager by naming the fields in less than useful way and just renaming it so it's easier to work with as an analyst. So that's it guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you can be notified as soon as I put out new content. Thanks for watching.